evening from our headquarters in New York. This is MSNBC's continuing coverage of the 2008 New Hampshire primaries. Alongside Chris Matthews, I'm Keith Olbermann. Here we go. Well, a long night for the Republicans. And, and for the Democrats. I think the Democrats' night will be shorter. Based uh, upon early notions in this campaign. And, those, and let's repeat now, in case anybody thinks we're jumping the gun, those are notions no, only. No, notions entirely derived from yesterday's experience and looking at the size of the crowds up there in New Hampshire, where I tried to go to all the major events. Hillary had a big crowd, but a lot of it was from out of state. Uh, the Obama crowd was growing and growing at every turn. And at the end of every session, people were more pumped up than they were at the beginning. He was raising the crowd up in, in, in spiritual interest. Let's put it that way. Is the story of Obama going to be eclipsed still by the story of the Democratic turnout? Are we going to see that kind of number as we saw in Iowa last week that was 91 percent growth from the 2004 campaign, which was by itself a year of activism? I think of the same story. I think it would be fair to say if Barack Obama wasn't in this race, we wouldn't see this excitement. And certainly you could say the excitement may also be simply the great battle between Hillary Clinton and Barack Obama. It's a championship battle. It's not a boring campaign at all. And American politics has been, to a lot of people in the past, boring. Young people have turned off to it. Young people have turned on to this campaign. Adults have been refreshed in their interest in politics. This has brought back politics the way Muhammad Ali brought back boxing, as you know. And, and by the way, it died after him. Or Tiger Woods in golf. And we can right. beat that analogy into the ground uh, for the next seven hours. I think that's our time frame. The election supervisor in Londonderry, New Hampshire, estimated at midday that he gets 70% turnout of his 15,000 registered voters. 70%. While those voters are still voting, we are going to be assiduously walking that tightrope about not characterizing how candidates are doing, but certain data is available to us. MSNBC's Nora O'Donnell is tracking that, the exit polling. Nora, good evening. Good evening to you, Chris and Keith. And one of the big questions in New Hampshire is how independents will vote. They've always played a key role in creating the state's go-your-own-way image, particularly in the primaries, because in New Hampshire, as we have mentioned, independents can vote in either party's contest. So taking a look at our exit polls, those who consider themselves independent made up a bit less than half of the participants in the Democratic primary. Now, that's comparable to what they attracted in the 2000 for race, where independents, again, made up about half of the Democratic primary. You have to keep in mind there was no contested Republican primary four years ago. Independents had nowhere else to go if they wanted to vote. This year, with a hotly contested GOP race, independents made up about a third of the Republican electorate for the primary. Now, when you compare these numbers to the figures we saw last week in Iowa, you realize how important independents are in the New Hampshire race. For the GOP, there are three times, you hear that, three times as many Republican independents voting in this primary as there were in Iowa, where only 13 percent of the Republican voters were independent. Now, for the Democrats, remember, just one in five of the caucus goers in Iowa called themselves independent compared to nearly half of the voters in the Democratic primary today. And you know, Chris and Keith, because there is still voting going on, we cannot tell you who these independents are leaning toward, but we can tell you at this time, one of the issues that is bubbling up for Republicans in this primary, and that is the very bitter feeling they are expressing about President Bush and his administration. That's right, more than half of the Republicans in our exit poll say they are either dissatisfied or downright angry with this president. Only two in five were satisfied and a very small percent were enthusiastic about what they have experienced in the past eight years. So that sort of confirms what we've been hearing about this electorate from other polls. There are a lot of angry people about the direction of this country. Chris and Keith. Thousand words. Uh, if a picture is worth a thousand words, then a number like eight percent is worth a thousand pictures. I assume. Nora O'Donnell, uh, looking at the exit polling for us. Uh, we're going to go up to Manchester now. NBC's White House correspondent David Gregory manning the central desk there. David, good evening. Good evening, Keith. The independent number is very interesting, and in those feelings about. President Bush, because that goes beyond New Hampshire. That becomes uh, an issue as to whether Republicans dissatisfied with President Bush and the Bush years are more likely to vote as Democrats in a general election, something that you're starting to hear uh, about as well. Let me ask you, David, it seems to me that uh, this anger is hard to read if you look at all the candidates on the Republican side. You know, John McCain, although he's a maverick, has sided with the president on the war. And you could argue maybe right. if you're very pro-Bush, you'd stick with McCain. But on the other hand, his personality is so different than Bush's and his person. It's hard to read that, isn't it? 
it is difficult to read, and, and that relationship has gone up and down. But I think for New Hampshire voters, these New Hampshire voters and independents who are upset with President Bush are still going to find an ally in John McCain. They remember him back in 2000. They supported him heavily by uh, 18, 19 points back in 2000. This is somebody who voted against the Bush tax cuts, as Mitt Romney has been trying to remind them of. Somebody who was critical of Donald Rumsfeld, critical of the war, critical of the administration uh, generally, but then very supportive of the surge. So he will still have a base here. And I think if we look at the overall being on the ground here uh, in New Hampshire, we are looking very closely at that independent vote. John McCain's uh, staff saying that that's, of course, their base of support, uh, although they were still looking very closely at a much tighter contest. Who is going to return out the Republican votes? Is it Romney? Is it McCain? They were running pretty tight. Of course, McCain looking for those independents to take him over the top. David, could there be too many independents to make that number really a, a, a milestone or an indicator? Could there be too much information about independents for us to say, look, the independents are driving McCain, the independents are driving Romney, the independents are driving Obama? Are the are, are the early numbers lining up with the fact that this is a state that the, about half of the half of the voters are registered as uh, as undecided as independent? Right, you've got 45 percent. I, I mean, if I if I get your drift here on the question, I think what's significant about this is that it may not be indicative of the candidate's true strength on either the Republican or the Democratic side. For instance, if Barack Obama is turning out young people, a lot of independent voters, it's not giving us as good of an indication of how he's doing within his own party. That becomes really important down the line. The big February 5th states, South Carolina as well. That's certainly true in history, tells us this back in 2000. John McCain's victory here in 2000 was really about independence. He narrowly edged out George W. Bush among Republicans and then, of course, couldn't close the deal when it came to South Carolina. So the independent number being so large in New Hampshire doesn't give us a real sense of the candidate's strength within their own parties. Independence good in the nominating process, or maybe good in the nominating process, great when it comes to the election process. Uh, David Gregory in, in well, Manchester. We'll, we'll get back to you and we'll expound upon this throughout the evening. Sure. Thank you, David.